Ladies, gentlemen, and of course, everybody between, welcome back to Out of Spec Renew. I'm your host, Declan, and you join me here in my very overcrowded garage where we're back with the RAV4 project. And uh, today, I got a very special piece. Hold on, let me grab it. This. This is a mini VCI J2534. And what this is, is this is a connector that goes into the OBD2 port in the RAV4 EV and lets it communicate with Toyota software that's used by repair people and Toyota dealers and stuff like that. Consumers aren't supposed to have this software, and so, uh, yeah, let's get into it. So I could just plug in a normal OBD2 reader into this port, and I would get the error messages, but what this allows me to do is it allows me to see the individual voltages of each module in the battery pack so we can see its real health. To do this, I sacrificed my laptop. It took me two days to figure this software out, and I recommend nobody do this because this thing is now absolutely riddled with malware and viruses. Yeah, I couldn't find a safe way to do this, so uh, after this video, I'm completely wiping this laptop. Oof. But now, for the moment of truth, I'm going to uh, run the software check, and let's see exactly what's wrong with this car. Okay. Uh Uh-oh. That can't be right. Uh-oh. Okay. So, there's a problem. Each of these module voltages are reading zero volts. Um, which uh, is bad. I believe they should be reading 12 volts. Uh, is that right? Oh no. I was not expecting it to be this bad. Oh. So. Um. Let me think about this for a second. Okay. I do not think that this is correct. I do not think that every single module is at zero. I think a much more likely situation is it's the ECU that is broken um, and is not reading the voltages correctly. I can't test that theory, though, without dropping the battery pack, which I've been told is not an easy task, especially if you don't have a lift. Jimmy Underhill of EV Swap did offer me his, but um nah. I've done this before. Let's let's try to do it without a lift. I'm a I don't do what I do. I'm a bad influence. Yeah, but I don't think this is right. I I think our ECU is bad. I don't think our battery pack is bad. Hopefully. But we got to drop the pack anyway. So let's do that. This is going to be a lot of work. All right, so I've changed my mind on what we're going to do to start off. And what we're going to do is something really dumb. So this seems like a good time to remind you, uh, don't do what I do in this video. Do not treat this as a tutorial. What I'm about to explain is not great. But what I have here is a 2002 RAV4 EV wire diagram manual. Massive. And through a couple days of research in this thing, I've found a strategy that I can exploit, and that is going to be overriding the main contactors of this car to force it, bypassing the safety systems, to let me read its voltages and charge it. Let's talk through that for a second. All right, let's get nerdy here for a second. This is a contactor. If you don't know what a contactor is, basically, when this thing isn't getting 12 volts into these wires here, electricity cannot go from here to here. When it is getting 12 volts, electricity can flow from here to here. So think of it like an electronic switch. Now, there are three of these in the battery pack of the RAV4. Okay, you'll have to ignore my terrible drawings, but these are contactors. So we have our main battery positive going into one of these contactors. We have our main battery negative going into one of these contactors, and this is from our main battery pack. And this one is what's called a pre-charge contactor. So the reason we have a pre-charge contactor is, let's imagine a scenario where we only have two contactors. 
So we close one and our voltage is still going to be at zero because there's no continuity. Then we're immediately going to close this contactor. Well, then our voltage is going to skyrocket like that to our 260 volts. This is a very hard power spike on the system. So what happens is we have a resistor hooked up to our pre-charge contactor, which will only let about half of the power through the system. So then we turn on our first contactor, we're still at zero volts. Then we turn on our pre-charge and we get about half our volts. And then we turn on our main contactor and we get the full voltage. So you can see this is a lot better than this because it gives the system some time to warm up and doesn't just throw voltage through the system. So what we first want to do is we want to override the negative contactor and turn this on so electricity can flow through here. Then we want to turn on the number two pre-charge contactor so electricity will get their half voltage. And then we'll want to turn on our main positive contactor which will get us our full power. And then very important, we want to turn off our pre-charge contactor once the entire system is activated because we don't want uh, power going through the resistor, it'll overheat and explode. I know from experience, I'm sorry, Robert. So now the question is, how do we actually override these contactors? Well, it's not as hard as you might think because we have the EV control module right here under the hood, which is the module that controls when the contactors are opened or closed, which means there has to be a signal coming out of this controller that enables and disables the contactors in the battery pack. And lucky for us, I have the wire diagram for just that. This is the system that talks about enabling the charging, which is exactly what we want because we can see these are our three contactor enable lines. And luckily these wire diagrams are super thorough and I know exactly where these are. So after much effort, I finally got the connector out. This is the connector we need. And from here, I can see that I need pins 26, 16, and 34. And luckily I have a diagram in here that'll tell me exactly which pin is which, or I could just count them. Or I could go off wire colors. I'm looking for a violet, a gray, and a pink wire. And uh, those go to respective contactors. So let's figure out which pins we need to get to and go from there. All right, so what I've done here is I've just tapped the connector with some wires. And so what I have here is a very official control board with three switches on it that will let me control the contactors. And then these will be wired up to the positive terminal of the battery. So when I flick this switch, the negative contactor should come on, then the pre-charge, then the positive. Let's get this wired up. So I have everything hooked up to the battery, uh, but the only thing hooked up to the connector currently is the positive. So I only have this positive switch hooked up and now we're gonna flick it. And what we need to be listening for is a contactor thunk in the battery. So let's listen and let's see if we can hear it. Hopefully you guys can hear that, but there is a contactor closing in the battery. That's a good sign. So now what we have to do is we have to wire all this up. This is where it starts to get dangerous. There are no safety systems active when I turn all of these on. There is nothing that can override the battery pack except for me. Do not do this. This is not a safe thing to do. And the only reason I'm doing it is because I know what I'm doing, kinda. Do not do this. So before I potentially break something, I guess I should explain why I'm overriding these contactors. And that is because I do not believe that this battery pack is at zero volts. This car was driving less than a year ago and I just don't think there's any way that it drained to zero volts on all the modules in a year time. So what this will allow me to do once the contactors are all closed is I can actually read the voltage up here. And so um, that will kind of give me an idea of what the battery pack is truly looking like. And then if I think it's recoverable, we can move on to the next step, which is just as sketchy, but we'll cross that bridge if we get there. So let's quickly see if we can get the negative contactor to close. It will close. So now, we are going to fully power on the car. Again, 
There is no BMS control over anything that's happening here. This is dangerous. Don't do this. But the process here is we're going to turn on positive. We're going to turn on pre-charge. We're going to turn on negative, And then we're going to turn off pre-charge. That should make the car be on. Okay. I'm going to get into position. I don't know if you guys can read the voltmeter at the moment, but it doesn't really matter because right now I am prioritizing my own safety over the content. So I'm going to put my little prongs on our positive and negative terminals down in here because I do not want this car on for very long. So let's turn on our positive, our pre-charge, our negative, 28 volts. Okay. Well, it's not zero. But it's a lot less than I was hoping. Okay, so now that we know the real voltage of the battery pack and we know how to override the safety systems of the battery pack, we're going to do something that is not ever recommended to do ever to any car. Don't do this. We're just going to try to jumpstart the traction battery. So right now in here we have our two connectors for our main battery and I'm going to start a, the battery pack is sitting around 27 volts right now and I'm going to pump it with voltage and I'm going to slowly raise it until it's around 200 volts and see if we can't get it to take a charge from its real charger at that point. So I'm going to hook up my DC power supply. This thing goes up to 200 volts and it only provides one amp so it's nice and slow and it's probably going to take me a day or two to charge this fully up. Uh, but let's go ahead and hook this up and see if we can't jumpstart a traction battery. Don't ever do this. All right, so we're back next day. It took uh, around 20 hours, I want to say, to get fully charged. But now we're sitting at 180 volts. And the reason I haven't gone to 200 is because it starts making a weird noise if I go over 180 volts. Uh, but it's holding 180 volts, which is a good sign. Um, it still means that the battery pack is very, very dead. This battery pack is supposed to be around 260 nominal. Um, but hopefully this is going to be just enough to get us to be able to plug it into the wall and get it to charge on its own systems. So we don't have to keep overriding the safety systems. So what we're going to do now is we're going to push this over to the charger because the only place I can actually plug in the charger is next to my garage. So we're going to push it over to the charger and see if we can't get it to take a charge. All right. Um, I know it's a mess over here, but this is the only place where I can actually plug in this charger. Um... First, though, I need to set this on. I actually don't know if I need to. There's a sensor that's, that um, prevents it from driving without this. I don't know if it's the same for charging. We'll set that on there. And now, take our paddle. I know this charger works. Actually, I don't know. I was just told that it works. And... Clicks. Oh... No way that just worked. Oh my god. I 100% uh, expected that not to work. Oh my, it's taking a charge. I did not expect that. I was going to drag this out for several more videos. Well, I guess I'll let it charge for a little while, a couple hours, and then let's see if we can't get it to drive. I did not expect this to work. All right, so I let it charge until it stopped charging, so we should have a full battery. I don't, it doesn't matter. Let's just see if it'll work. Key in, foot on the brake. No way, it just worked. No warning lights, full battery. Our voltage is nice and high. Did it really, did I? I did not expect it to be this easy to fix. 
Hold on. Let's take this down the road real quick. I did not, okay, so we got two drive modes here, D and B. B, I think, means more regenerative braking, let's see. No way she just works. No war no warning lights. Our voltage, hold on, let me, let me floor it here and let's see if our voltage drops. So let's get into the road here. I want to floor it. Let's see if our volts drop. Didn't even budge. Did this... Did I already fix it? I did not expect this to work at all. Let's see the regen. Oh, there's barely any regen, even in B. Let's see. More or less in... Okay, less regen in drive. I mean, she's not slow. Speeds right up the hill. Oh well, let's let's do a let's do a little bit of a zero to zero, zero to thirty here. Right, hold on. Pedal to the metal. It's not quick. But it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's lacking power at all. Like, this thing feels fine. It's cool. It's smooth. I don't hear any weird sounds. Don't smell any weird smells. It smells like old car in here. Oh, I wonder if the AC works. That's something to test out later. Because that'll absolutely ruin my audio. I cannot believe this thing just, all it took was jump starting the battery pack, which by the way, again, don't ever do that. That was not a safe thing to do. This regen is kind of like an on off type thing. So once I'm off the gas, if I'm on the gas pedal, it doesn't regen. If I'm even slightly off the gas pedal, it regens and it's on off, on off, on off. Very, very kind of hard to control. Especially when I'm going downhill. Horn. Oh, that is a good horn good horn I'm gonna do a range test on this actually in the comments below what I want you to do is okay let me give you some background first the batteries in the battery packs in this car were expected to last five years this car is 22 years old and I just revived the battery pack I'm gonna discharge and recharge it a couple times to just cycle the battery and then we're gonna do a range test in the next video in the comments below, give me a guess on how many miles you think we'll get of range on this old original battery pack. I am going to guess 20 miles. Oh, also the original range was 95 miles. So that gives you some reference there as well. So yeah, let me know in the description, in the comments, how many miles you think this thing will get in the range test. This thing is fine to drive. I like this, I want this. Maybe I just won't give it back to Kyle. Just run away. What's he gonna do? Track me down? Report it as stolen? Not give me the title? Man, I want one of these. This thing is great. That's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, yeah, this video didn't go how I expected. I did not expect to fix it in this video. Oh, well, I guess I gotta come up with more content now. But don't worry, we're not quite done with this project. We are going to be doing a range test, and then we're also retrofitting some J7072 in conjunction with the Magna Charge. Don't worry, we're keeping the Magna Charge, but we're also adding J7072. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and a comment. It means a lot to me. I read all the comments, and uh, let me know how much range you think this thing is going to get in the range test. I'll see you guys next week. Love ya. A pinecone just fell.